Well, hi there, it's Sandy Alnock, and today I am doing still the Lenten Bible Journaling Challenge I have kept up, but instead of just showing you the flip through, I'm gonna show you yesterday's page. I turned on the camera because I thought it would come out cool. So Isaiah 55, come all you who are thirsty, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come by and eat. And this one made me think of Jesus and the woman at the well, even though it's in Isaiah, so I took a couple of round things that I found in my studio and made circles first. So the outer one is the outside of the, the well, and then we're looking down into it where the coffee cup was. And then I'm gonna draw a, an off-center circle on the inside for the water. You could make it perfectly centered, but why bother doing that when we could make it lopsided? Because if you do it intentionally lopsided, no one will fault you for not being perfect. And I drew the handles on the two sides, just a little ring, and then lines that come out. So it's coming toward you, and that's going to be the challenge, to make this look like you're looking down into the well itself. With my watercolors, which are Daniel Smith watercolors that I always use because they don't bleed, they are the, the best that I find in that way. A lot of other watercolors don't bleed, but... These are pretty much, I haven't found any colors, any individual colors that bleed through. And some of them have, you know, if you use their reds, they'll bleed through when others won't, that kind of thing. And I'm just using the leftover color on my palette, some blue and some purple to make the water. And I did some concentric circles that are just kind of fading into each other with a little bit of white left in between. <clears throat> Excuse me. And now I'm going to do a little bit of the rope the rope that comes up from the bucket. And it's gonna get wider as it gets towards you because that's what ropes do. They, as they, as well, as anything comes towards you in perspective, it gets bigger as it's towards you and smaller as it's further away. But notice that I haven't really drawn a whole lot out. I'm not worried about a whole lot of detail. I'm gonna let the colors bleed into each other because I'm just trying to get some overall color in here. I'm gonna add my lines later. A lot of people get stressed out and they draw the lines first and they're worried they've got to get it exactly perfect and what if they don't and blah blah blah. Well, I paint it first because that allows me to kind of change things up if I need to. If my circle doesn't come out exactly perfect, then when I put my black lines in, I can go around the circle I've painted and not make it so perfect like the lines that are on there. And I'm all for less stress personally. I don't know about you, but I don't like to stress. So I've got some brown around the inside of the well, and I'm gonna put some bricks around the outside. So if you're looking down into it, these are the bricks you would lean on as you're looking down into the well. And I'm just gonna put them in different colors. So one that has a little more yellow, one that has a little more green, one that has a little more blue, with just whatever color is left over on my palette. And that you'll notice the paper is a little on the crinkly side, but once I get this done, I'm gonna be able to iron it and make it all nice and smooth. So I'm not gonna worry about the wrinkliness because it's going to smooth out nicely. Also, the color is a little blown out here. You'll see in a few minutes, I did adjust when I started doing the pen work, but nonetheless, it is what it is. So now I'm gonna to try to add another layer of color toward the very bottom of the well. So as you look down into the well, really deep down, it's gonna get darker and darker and darker. And you could continue to get darker than this, but I didn't want to get that dark because I want the color to still be readable or the words to still be readable through the color when I get this left half done. And if only the right half got dark, I'd have to worry about transitions from one side to the other. So instead of worrying about that transition, I'm just going to not make it super, super dark. So add some water so I can soften the color out as it goes out to the edge and get that all finished up. And then I'm gonna be able to wait for it just for a second to dry and then iron it. Oh, that's right, I was gonna put a little bit of gray on the bucket, just a slight bit, and I'm leaving a white lip around the outside edge. And there you go, there's a little accurate, more accurate color there. I don't know what happened to the first half, but there we go. So now I'm gonna use my Micron pen to add details. So here you can see if my circle wasn't right or my painting didn't come out perfect, I can now fix that. I can go around where my paint is and not worry about trying to paint up to lines. And it allows me a lot more freedom when I start doing the painting portion 
and I'm not all stressed out. And this study, I don't know if, if too many of you guys have been doing it. There's been a bunch of people who have been doing this study even without the purchasing the book that I purchased, but it's been amazing. I mean, there've been a lot of them and you'll see some more in this week where we're really looking at Jesus' sacrifice and how much he went through for us. And then other ones like this, where we're reminded to just keep coming back to the well, keep coming back to Jesus, keep coming back to the word and continually drinking from it, continually refreshing ourselves. And I am really, I've really been blessed by this particular study. It's been really amazing. So there's my ropes and you can see they're starting to look more like ropes now that they have lines around them. And those shapes got bigger and bigger as they got toward me. And I put a little bit of the, the little pieces that make up a rope around them, little stripes, little lines and things. And now I'm going to put a couple more concentric circles. Again, I'm not measuring anything. I'm not pre-drawing it out. And then I'll throw in something that looks a little bit like bricks. And I'm not going to draw every brick in either. I'm just sketching it in. I'm making it really loose. And making things loose is where you have a little bit more freedom with your Bible journaling. Instead of saying, oh my gosh, I can't draw and laboring over it. Just put a couple quick lines in. This is sped up. But it still didn't take me very long. I think the full footage for this was still 15 minutes. So it doesn't take very long at all to create something like this. And now come all you who are thirsty, I put on the walls of my well. And that's that. So let's do a quick flip through of this past week because I wanted to share those pages with you. The first passage this week was from Psalm 72. And it's all about the job description of a king and only Jesus can fulfill it perfectly but what I decided to do was to do the scepter and I wrote down the job description I wrote down all the things being kind and helpful to the needy and those who need help the most and wrote a prayer for our leaders who boy do they need that I wish that was the qualifications that our leaders had for their jobs but I did a scepter and in addition to using a gold pen I also used some glossy accents on it to make a few parts of it shine. And if you run your finger over it, you kind of get the feeling of the texture that's there. And it kind of makes a really neat effect. You just need to leave the glossy accents out to dry overnight so that it doesn't glue your Bible clothes because it's actually an adhesive, even though it's this pretty shiny thing. And this is the gold uniball pen that I used to add some, some shine to the scepter itself. And the next page was a hard one, but it was really beautiful in the way that I was thinking about it because it started out with Behold, God's Servant. And I started by making stripes of color to create the face and just gradually adding dark as I, I got in there and darker and darker and darker with a white pen and a black pen to add the final details and just let a lot of it fade into the paper. And here's one that was just fun, you know, looking at the whole earth, the light for the Gentiles reaching the end of the earth. And it was just fun to make all that beautiful color. And it was really easy to do. I just did that with a baby wipe, as I showed you before in a couple of techniques. And then added the pen work and the, the scripture and everything by hand at the end. The next one, I made kind of a short body for Jesus. He Either his feet should have been smaller or his body should have been taller, but there you go. But he set his face toward Jerusalem. Despite knowing what was coming, Jesus knew they were going to beat him and tear out his, his beard and all these things that it said in scriptures. And he, he read them when he was a child and he studied them his whole life. But he knew that he had to get to that city and he had to get to that cross way in the back. So on the left here is not this week's page. The right one was this, this week's page. Jesus was pierced for me. And so I drew the two hands with just a hole in the middle of them. And then I added the glossy accents again to pierced because that was fun when I added it the first time. So I thought, why not do that this time? I used Daniel Smith watercolors in the background, but I used my hero arts, my new hero arts for the lettering because with these hero arts, they're liquid watercolors. So you can get consistent color across something. And I thought, oh, let me try that. Well, I found out, unfortunately, they bleed through because this is not even using very much and I'm using it on top of something and it's still bled through. So I won't be using those in my Bible anymore. <laughs> and then here is this week's page. 
I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, click that like button and share it with your friends if you think there's somebody that you know who would be interested in some Bible journaling teaching. And join me on the Facebook page if you would like. There are plenty of people who don't have the book who've been journaling along with us. And you don't have to journal every day. I've been trying to keep up with it, but you can skip a day if you need to. Not a problem. We're just learning together, and I love seeing what other people are doing for the same verses I am and hearing what God's saying to them because we're all getting different lessons out of every verse. So I am growing by leaps and bounds. God bless you. I'll see you guys later.